So new to 4.0 is the texture layer editor and basically this allows users to texture and surface their objects without having to go through the render tree. So it uses a sort of Photoshop layer approach where users can specify one image after another with alpha channels or external masks and uh, basically composite them on top of one another and under the hood we're building the render tree uh, which the user can go in later and refine if they want to or they can stay uh, simply within the texture layer editor and work that way uh, alone so just to give you an idea of what's happening uh, let's take a look at our gun and you can see the render tree we just have this Lambert node and if we actually look at our texture layer view basically we have this filter um, that allows us to inspect various areas of uh, uh, various shader areas of this object so we can actually go on the material and see uh, all the all the ports on the material we can go to the actual surface input and as well we have two clusters on the object so we can actually scope to the clusters here as well so basically as we build new layers what's happening is we get this layer object that gets built on the shader uh, we're actually inspecting and as new layers get built you can see they start getting added to that layer view as we start creating new images um, under the hood we're actually building uh, plugging in image nodes and mixers uh, to basically uh, control the effects here so essentially you're driving the render, th render tree through uh, this layer view UI so let's just quickly look at the, the UI for um, the texture layer and some of the preferences. Since the texture layer um, basically does the same work as the render tree, it makes sense that a lot of the UI is similar. Uh, for example, we have the same recycle and lock modes uh, as the render tree. And also we can expect uh, different components of the object selected. So here we can actually look at the material structure of the object. Uh, its actual surface port with a Lambert or clusters that are on the object. Um, and we can also go to the user preferences and set uh, the UI of the texture layer editor, the default UI. So I'm just going to create a, a default layer just to give us something to look at there. Um, so what we can do is actually uh, reorder the direction that the layers stack up uh, top to bottom or bottom to top. Uh, we can uh, show the new layers as they're created in a, in a collapse state. Uh, by default, that's off. And as well, we can show what ports are actually seen and connected with the new layers. So by default, ambient and diffuse are very common uh, uh, color channels to use with new textures. So by default, when we create new layers, they're automatically mapped to the ambient and diffuse and connected at 100%. Um, but you can set these options here depending on your workflow and we've got some controls for the thumbnail size so uh, this is pretty handy if you want to create a custom layout for the texture layer editor and build a larger view for your icons so you have more of a compositing style layout you can also adjust the width of the different columns uh, in the same way you can always also go in here and interactively adjust these settings so there's a lot of uh, uh, that kind of work been done with the UI. Drag and drop is supported between icons. Um, uh, there's a few other things I didn't mention here are the different buttons for the controls. Uh, we can either create new layers if you, as you've seen me done or uh, this is a new layer but we actually specify what the input is. So for example an image. So it'll create a new layer with an image and we can also use different procedurals automatically. So it's just a quick way to uh, set up your layer views. Uh, we've got the ability to delete a layer and rearrange the order of layers and we'll get into more detail on the, uh, with those with the production example uh, which we'll look at next.